right, in this program, we're going to be taking a look at using a, ha a hash function to build hash uh, tables uh, using a hash function um, to store values in an array. We're going to take the user's name. We're going to convert their name to an ASCII code value, run that through a hashing function that uh, we design, and then based on that value, that is where they will get stored in uh, the array. So let's go ahead and uh, do that now. So the first thing we need are some variables and we'll talk about what all these variables are after we get them uh, entered so what we're going to do is I'm going to finish typing these then we'll take a look at all of them uh, and talk about what they are okay so we have our variables um, set here so we have int value and what that's going to do is it's going to get us the value of the um, of the name we're going to ask the user to enter their name and we need to get the uh, ASCII code value so we're going to store that in int value uh, we could overwrite it and uh, store the hash value but having separate variables makes this a little easier to see uh, what is happening we also have the value of int hash that's going to hold our um, value from the hashing function that we will design we have table 100 so we have an array here and um, it's table and it will hold 100 slots based on the hash value that is where we will store the person's uh, name then we have length we need to get the length of the uh, string that they enter for their name that way uh, we know how many times a loop needs to run we also need to get their name that's dimensionalized as a string because we're working with uh, letters there we also need to get the letter as a string as well because what we're going to do with that is isolate each letter because we need to isolate isolate each letter get the ASCII code value and then we'll add them all together so uh, let's go ahead and get started the first thing we need to do is ask the user to enter their name so we'll type in enter your name and then we're going to store that into str name and to do that we just do str name equals console dot read line whatever the user enters we are going to read uh, the program will read and store that into str uh, name so the next thing we need to do is get the length and int length is going to be equal to str name dot length so what that will do is it'll take the length of the string and we can store that value and the whole reason for storing the length of the value is so we can isolate each letter and here's how we do that we're going to use a for loop for i equals we're going to do um, zero to int length and minus uh, one and we'll talk about uh, why we have to do that in just a few moments so what we need to do is we need to isolate each letter here's how we're going to do that we're going to set uh, the letter equal to str name dot substring because we only want to get one part of the uh, str name string we're going to start at value i which is going to be zero then one then two then three and we need to specify how many characters we want to grab so if we start at character zero which is the very first letter we only want to grab uh, one character we only want to grab the zero uh, character which is the first letter the first character which is actually the second letter and uh, so on and we want that to run to the length minus one so that's why it's zero so for example if we have name and slot zero would be uh, in so zero would be in slot or letter um, in slot one would be a and so on uh, visual basic does not start with uh, slot one it starts with slot zero so if you and if you're wondering why we're going zero to int length minus one it's because we need to run a certain amount of times and we need to start with zero and we need to grab that uh, first uh, letter uh, the next thing we need to do is we have that value variable and this will allow us to store the ASCII code so int value and the first time it runs int value is going to be zero it is not null it is just zero and we're going to just update the value every time this loop uh, runs so we have int value equals int value plus and we're going to take the ASCII code of the letter that we just stored and once we do that um, it'll run the certain amount of times that it needs to run however long the uh, string is and then we're going to update the int value and because we're taking each letter the ASCII code value of the letter we can get the total value of the name so that is the point that is the purpose of uh, doing that so the next thing we need to do is we need to do a hashing uh, function so uh, what we're going to do is because it's a function we're going to go ahead and create it and then we'll um, 
transmit the value that we just got from int value. So we're going to call this uh, function. We'll just call it uh, hash. We're going to do by val, and we're going to do x as integer. And we'll talk about uh, what that means in uh, just a minute. This is a very, very uh, short uh, function. We're going to dim uh, int return as integer. We're going to return a value. You don't have to use int return. You can use any uh, thing you want. I like to use int uh, return just to uh, keep it simple. So we need to solve for int return and that's going to be x mod and we're going to mod that by or modulate that by uh, 100, 100. We'll talk about what that uh, means in just a minute. So let's go back up here. Let's go ahead and we need to call this um, this function. So we're going to do int hash equals and we're going to call the function hash. And what are we going to trans uh, or transfer down there? And that is int value. So let's talk about what's what's happening here. So we have int value. We got the value, which is the ASCII code of all the letters added together. We are using this function hash. So int hash we're going to get a value and that's going to be the int uh, return. So we are using the function hash. We are transmitting int value. That is what is we have in parentheses. That is what's going to be represented by the letter x. We have by val x as integer. So int value is going to be transferred down. We're going to use x to hold the int value and uh, that's going to be an integer and then this as integer right here means what are we going to return the value as so we're going to return it as an integer so that's why we have that here and you must have this here when we do return int return we're going to be returning it as an integer and when we return this value it's going to be stored into int hash so that's how that works the int return equals x which will be int value modulate 100 what that means is we're going to take the value of x which is the int value of the ASCII code for the word or for their name and we're going to modulate by 100 that means we're going to take x divided by 100 and it's just going to give us the remainder so for example if the value came out to say 1043 well, 1,000 divided by 100 is comes out to an even number. It would have, if we do 1,043 modulate 100, that what that means is it's going to display the remainder of 43. So it would give us a value of 43. So uh, the MOD code, all that does is it divides those two numbers, but only gives us uh, the remainder. So once we have that value, what we're going to do is, we're going to do a console.write line here so we can see what the uh, what the value actually is. So we're going to say uh, the value is, and what we're going to do is we're going to do int hash. That way we can see what the value is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, store that in the uh, table. So what we're going to do is we're going to do table. Uh, what did we do? I think it was hash value int hash so table int hash so that's the spot of the array we are doing will equal and that's going to be str name that's where we are storing the name now to make sure this does it correctly we're going to need a console dot uh, write line because we need to make sure that it does it so we're going to say uh, the name and we're going to output their name whatever they typed in and we'll say uh, is in slots. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, int um, hash. Make sure it's there. But if you look at this, you'll notice that really doesn't uh, show it. It's just pulling the name and the int hash value. So we'll do this. The name should be blank and should be um, in slot and then that will tell us so what we'll do is we'll actually write some code to actually do that now so console dot write line and we'll say uh, table and we'll pull int hash and we'll make sure that um, it is in uh, that slot so table int hash like if it's written in say you know slot 95 it should display uh, their name so um, Let's take a look at this and let's run it and uh, let's see if it works. 
Okay, so enter your name. So I'll enter my name, which is uh, Shane. The value is 95. So the name should be Shane and should be in slot 95. And we have it uh, displaying there. And it looks like it was stored in slot 95. Because right here on this console.write line, we have table. Our hash value was 95. And by writing uh, table 95, it should display uh, my name. And it does. So it does work. Uh, the name should be Shane in slot 95. We have table int hash 95 and it does uh, work if you want to uh, double check this uh, you could actually just write table 95 and then that will uh, work because the value is 95 so we're going to try it again so we're going to go ahead and run this so shane value is 95 the name should be shane should be in slot 95 and when we actually put slot 95, we see the value or the uh, string uh, returning. So that uh, does work. I'm going to change it back to hash because I could enter any uh, name. So that's it uh, for this. In the next one, we're going to take a look at what happens if that value is ar it already has a value stored in it. So we're going to take a look at doing that. So make sure you have uh, all this code here because we're going to be uh, manipulating it in the next video.